Dare you trek through the bandit ravine? Hello and welcome to another map making video here at the Game Chamber. Again, we're using Incarnate, a fantastic program that you can try out for free. I'll pop a link in the description. Today we're doing something a little bit different though. Today we are doing a battle map. Uh, so a battle map is a completely top down map and this is designed to have actual sort of miniatures on there. I pretty much exclusively at the moment play D&D in a digital form. We use things like Roll20 and, and Discord to chat to my group. Um, so this will be most likely going into something like that, but there's no reason, of course, you can print these out and actually play with real miniatures as well. As soon as the world starts to open up a bit more, which would be good, <laughs> uh, you can add grids and all sorts of things like that on there as well. Uh, it's just a, uh, a random encounter that I'm building out today. I'm basically uh, building up my portfolio of these kind of things as a DM, so I've always got them to hand. I'm a big fan of maps. I, I map a lot of stuff out, probably too much, a lot of people would say, honestly. Uh, but yeah, I'm a, re a real big fan of uh, mapping things out, so uh, even sort of random encounters like this, the sort of thing that might happen on the journey to somewhere else, I, uh, I'm i a big fan of mapping them out. So I, I, I love role-playing and I love the theatre of the mind stuff, uh, but when it comes to actually doing damage to stuff, I, I really think it benefits having a, a map, even if it's just something as simple as, uh, you know, a few goblins in a hideout or, or something like that. So uh, so basically that's what we're doing here today. I, uh, I got the original idea from a ravine map that I saw on the Incarnate subreddit. I'll place a, a link in the description to it. It really was fantastic and uh, it gave me the idea for this uh, false perspective, I guess you would call it, which is a, a theme park uh, terminology term used a lot. Well, it's used all sorts of places, but I know it from my uh, history with theme parks. Uh, and the idea is, is that you uh, fake perspective by making things larger or smaller than they actually are. And we're going to try and do that a little bit here. And the only thing I didn't really like about the original map on, uh, on Reddit was that it just kind of was a simple ravine uh, from left to right with uh, very little else going on. And I really like to always have a few spots where some bad guys can go give the uh, give the fight a little bit of dynamicism give, give the fight some options for people so here we've got the uh, the, the sloped area up there that's going to be a slightly raised area and then as you'll see as we as we add these cliffs in we're going to create a few other little cliffside places where uh, some some archers or whatever can stand a bit higher and cause our PCs some issue. As far as the cliffs go, all I'm really doing with these is making them slightly larger uh, as they go up. The idea is we're going to build three or four layers of these up and just making them slightly larger. I mean, it really is subtle, but just making them slightly larger is enough to kind of give that impression that the other ones are lower down. And also, we're going to try and make the stuff uh, that's lower down in the ravine to be a little bit darker. But imagining you're uh, imagine, excuse me, you're looking right down on this real sort of top down here um, right down onto the ravine so here you'll see that we make each cliff layer just a little bit darker using uh, the shadow paint there with a really low opacity on it just so you can uh, you can get a better idea of what's going on and it gives that sort of idea of uh, of the depth there and you can see we're just bringing in the opacity on the cliffs there to make them a little bit lighter as we get a little bit higher I'm still learning a lot of the features of incarnate I, I, I feel like I'm relatively competent at just regular maps now but really learning how to push some of the abilities of it is something I'm sort of improving on as I go um, a lot of the blend modes and the opacity and things like that you can get some really awesome effects out of them um, but it just takes a little bit of time to go through them and really figure out which one each uh, uh, each one does but again you'll see there that we've just knocked the opacity down just slightly more and increased the size a little bit more so it's lighter and bigger again giving that impression that um it's a little bit higher up than the, than the one below it and again there with the ground we're just using the it's a snow texture we're actually using there but we're just using it very light so really we're just using it as a highlight that's one thing i would love to see them add actually i don't know if anyone from incarnate would ever watch this but um there's a great shadow texture which is basically black so that's really useful for doing darker areas uh, it'd be nice to have a really plain white area so that we didn't have to sort of fudge the the snow there to do it but uh, but otherwise i think you get a pretty uh, decent effect uh, using something like this here and again you'll see we've come up to uh, do the same one on that one so it's just a little bit lighter and uh, you've got a few more options 
Uh, the only thing I'm doing there then is going to be adding some uh, much larger rocks to kind of finish off the top. I, I really didn't want the whole thing here at the top to be super smooth. I didn't think that looked particularly realistic. Uh, luckily, there are some really gorgeous sort of uh, big rocks basically in the in the map here, so you can sort of scale them up. Uh, one thing I might do actually is they've definitely got sort of like a brownie rock going on, whereas most of the paintwork I've done there is more of a grey rock. Uh, grey rock, excuse me. And uh, I think you could probably change that a little bit. You can use one of the uh, blend modes to to give those more of a, a gray look and i think that I, I might go back and do that afterwards because uh yeah it's a, they, they're a little bit stark compared to the rest of the build but you'll see here i do go around and add a little bit of brown into the whole place just to kind of uh, make those look a little bit more copacetic and, and fitting in uh, and then the last thing to do really is just use some of these stamps uh, and again we're going to be using the scale of these to really kind of enforce uh, this perspective idea as we go down so you'll see here on the top layer we're adding some uh, tiny little bushes uh, and then uh, and they get a little bit smaller each layer down you'll see we just de decreasing the size it's still varying the size a little bit so there's some larger and some smaller on each layer but uh, the the parameters of each one is is much lower as they go down so the largest ones are probably about the middle size of the of the layer up you know just to kind of help it all flow down and also this is obviously a very dry very barren space so even though we are adding some foliage i'm keeping it pretty light uh, using foliage that looks quite um uh, like it would be comfortable in dry spaces so things like succulents and and, uh, and anything with like a rubbery kind of leaf uh, normally does pretty well in these places and then also keeping them towards the edges keeping them towards the cracks uh, the, the sort of places where a little bit of moisture may gather uh, and a little bit of sort of dirt or sand where the the root structure can sort of grab hold of uh, you'll often find that in, uh, in these sort of drier spaces that the cracks are, are where the uh, these sort of things develop and then uh, a few rocks loose rocks i think you're crazy with these because they they look uh, a little uh, out of place to see these nice smooth rocks here because really the, the the rocks that are smooth that usually means they've been weathered you know obviously you see very smooth rocks on beaches and more sort of jaggedy rocks in in areas like this where there isn't sort of crazy amounts of wind but you know they, i suppose this could be sort of a windy pass uh, to make these rocks a little bit smoother but yeah i don't go too crazy on these really um just to kind of help again help with that depth uh, but i think really this is where the uh, the the depth perception stuff really comes in uh, by placing down um, some man-made materials that are obviously very different scale so there we've got a small ladder up to that first raised area and then a much larger ladder ladder excuse me you can't get my words out today up to this larger rock here again obviously the exact same sort of ladder size of ladder it just looks bigger because it's closer at least that's the idea again with the campfires there we've got a lit campfire down the bottom and a uh, an unlit one here I am a huge fan of narrative storytelling. I really like to try and tell uh, at least some sort of narrative in every single map I do rather than them being so static. So uh, the idea here is that that top fire has been put out. Um, they are obviously much higher up there and most likely will have seen the adventurers coming. They will have seen the PCs coming. So they have put that fire out and have headed off down the bottom there, out past that barrel uh, to maybe get reinforcements or just to retreat depending on, on what creatures I we decide are going to be down here. Um, it may end up being part of a campaign this uh, but at the moment it is purely one to just go in the bank so that I've got it um, for uh, for random encounters or to fill out a, another uh, campaign that I've been working on. Um, it's difficult showing this sort of stuff here because I know that the, the people who I may well DM for uh, have got a good chance of seeing this so I'm, I probably won't be doing videos of uh, you know the, the BBG's lair or anything like that because obviously it's spoilers like, you know um, so so most of the maps we're going to be doing are going to be these sort of incidentary ones really uh, but there you go i think it's turned out really well i it's going to go in the bank like i say i haven't used it yet but i think it'll be good fun when we get round to it uh, if you've got any suggestions for maps you would like to see let me know because i'm always looking at expanding my library so uh, you might have a good idea that i haven't had yet thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it if you have give us a like it really does help out and until next time keep it here with a subscribe for more from the game chamber